heard about this tribe in Zimbabwe whose members have only two toes. There is little information online about their identity because they are living in a conflict zone. I want to find out their true story, spread awareness about their struggles, and learn what life would be like with this shocking condition. It is 5 a.m. I'm looking at a beautiful sunrise over Lake Kariba on the border of Zambia and Zimbabwe, and our driver has just arrived. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? How are you doing, bro? The journey to reach the Vodoma tribe is going to take 15 hours on long dirt roads with several checkpoints. Our goal is the Kayemba district, right on the tri country border with Zambia, Mozambique, and Zimbabwe. Say the road is not in the best of conditions, but we'll make it today. Not tomorrow, but today. <laughs> Well, it's 7.34 in the morning, so we have the whole day. Despite years of conflict and political turmoil, Zimbabwe's nature remains our greatest treasure. The bumpy road leads us through a national park called Manapools, where the wildlife is abundant. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Our first sighting. Oh, look, he's yawning. I got the yawn. I saw the yawn. <laughs> out of nowhere, we're just driving and an elephant popped out. Look at this. He's so cute. <laughs> He's a baby. Wow. Yeah, that's a teenager. We just almost hit a tortoise in the road. One of the small five, that's a leopard tortoise. We're going to release it safely. So that he would have been killed in a second. He would have been killed in a second. As you can see, the roads are empty. There is nobody around here. And I mean nobody. <laughs> Tsitsi fly. Yeah, we are, uh, if our car breaks down right now, we're totally screwed. But we shall make it there. We stopped somewhere in the bush in the middle of nowhere. We are filling up our tank for the last time in a while. Filling it to the brim like, ah, because we want to have fuel I mean, for the next six, seven hours. Have you ever heard of the Vadoma people? Yes, 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 yes. We read about them. What do you know about them? Those people, they are, they, even they are afraid of people. They need to live on their own. If a visitor comes there, I don't do a hide. They will hide. Yes. As we approach the more intense conflict area, Sisa gets word that we need to get a special permit to enter the region. It, 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 yeah. Why are they so suspicious? I think somebody might have come here and did something wrong. The decades-long conflict between Zambia and Zimbabwe is largely centered around the Zambezi River. It's a crucial source of water, electricity, and agriculture for both countries, and tensions have flared up in recent weeks at the border. I'm feeling nervous because Sisa looks uncomfortable. He's been a guide in Zimbabwe for 20 years and has never explored this region. Region. Right now, we are at the mercy of the people in charge. Sisa told us to stay in the car because he wants to handle it without us. He said it would be easier if he goes, so hopefully we get it. How are you doing back there? Good. I'm good. Let's talk, let's talk. Hmm? You were going to be charged, but uh, I've talked to them. We're just going to pay for a basic permit. I'll need 125 from you. That's fine, but are we going to get the permit? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's okay, so, so give me one. What's the problem? Yeah. Did we get it? Nice. Good work, man. Thank, thank you, buddy. We got it. Boom. Yes, yes, yes. Right, we are at the checkpoint here. The stick checkpoint. There you go. Too easy. All right, we got in. They were trying to be tough. Yeah. Did you, did you notice that? Yeah, I noticed. That's where it went. They were nice. Nice talking. They were nice. I wasn't expecting to pay 125 bucks for a permit, and part of me doubts that it's the normal price. But now that we have the green light, I'm anxious to finally reach the tribe. We've been driving for six hours on dirt roads. No joke, and this is the first little settlement that we've seen. It's not even a village, it's just like a couple of little huts here. And there's one shop. We're gonna buy out whatever this shop has, bring gifts to the tribe. How are you? How are you, How are you bro? What do you think about this shop? Cool. Dangerous stuff now. This is the first shop we've seen in like six hours of driving. And we are literally buying the whole shop out. <laughs> yeah. I was asking, that's just a lot of stuff, my love. Four, yeah. Four. yeah, four. They need it. Oh, that's oh, a soap? Yeah, that's, that's cool. a soap. So this is a multi-purpose soap. You can bathe it with it, you can wash with it, you can even brush your teeth with it. Really? Just make little shavings and oh. put on a toothbrush, it bubbles. 100 trillion, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> After 12 hours of driving, finally made it to the Vodoma tribe. Deanna just pulled out Google Maps and you can see we are on the border of Mozambique, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. It's so cool. How are you feeling right now? Very good. I'm excited. Little Banji. Little Banji. Little Banji. We are giving rice flour, cooking oil to them. 
<laughs> we are distributing it to the people here and all kinds of cooking oil, sugar, rice, flour. We're gonna be spending a few hours with them just hanging out and appreciating the life up here. Speaking of, look at this massive baobab tree that I'm standing under. So incredible. <laughs> According to Vodoma mythology, their ancestors emerged from a baobab tree, these strange looking things that originate in sub-Saharan Africa. The Vodoma share a rare genetic condition which results in the absence of the middle toes and a cleft where they would be. This condition affects about one in four children within the community, and it leads to feet that appear to have two large toes resembling a lobster's claw. This condition is thought to be so prevalent due to the community's long history of isolation and intermarriage. The Vodoma are still considered one of the few remaining hunter-gatherer tribes in Zimbabwe, living in relative seclusion and maintaining their traditions. I think with merging with different cultures and different people of normal tours, the genetic uh, makeshift of the normal tours is taking over and they are losing the original two tours that they had in the past because it's getting Mabule. diluted. Tell me what it's like to, to live with two toes. What are the challenges? What's the lifestyle like? Saying when he's working with these two toes, the first challenge is, you know, difficult to get some shoes. There's no proper shoes, which is uh, there's some painful on this foot. So no shoes? No shoes, yeah. Is it difficult to walk or walking is normal? The saying is difficult when walking. I can't imagine what life must be like without five toes on each foot. It makes me realize that there's so much we take for granted. To be honest, the people that I've met here seem shy and depressed. Maybe because they never get visitors, or that they receive no help from the government. Some of my favorite travel experiences have been visiting tribes in Africa, such as South Sudan's Mandari tribe, Ethiopia's Mercy tribe, and the DR Congo's Pygmy tribe. So incredible, a celebration of life and just happiness. All of these tribes welcome outsiders and are eager to share their culture, but I can already tell that the Vodoma tribe is different. He made this guitar out of a plastic water bottle, a piece of wood, and a, and a shoelace. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Right. Thank you. If you are a traveler, then you know how stressful it can be to get cash or send payments overseas, especially in a place like Sub-Saharan Africa. ATMs aren't always reliable and airport exchange offices may not offer the best exchange rates. That's why I use MoneyGram. It's a convenient and reliable way to send money in over 200 countries and territories. I use MoneyGram to get cash when I travel, which makes it super easy to tip people wherever I go. On the app, I can link my bank account, credit card, or debit card to send money to myself and then pick it up as cash, or I can send money to my friends in other countries. If you are someone who travels often or lives far away from your loved ones, or you need to send money often to your loved ones, then I'm telling you MoneyGram is a fantastic option. They offer amazing rates when needing to pick up cash when traveling abroad. MoneyGram is convenient, fast, and reliable, and I actually used it at the end of this video to surprise someone with a gift. So make sure to watch till the end. Click the link down below to download MoneyGram and start using the app to your benefit. All right, now let's get back to the story. Nice. <laughs> Whoa. It's a pretty surreal experience to finally be out here. Like, look at this beautiful nature, these people around here. Crazy to think that I was in Arizona like three days ago, man. It's been a very long 20 hour day and we need to find a place to sleep, but there are no hotels around here. We made our way back into Kayemba and stumbled across the only restaurant in this tiny town. We found this little shop and this lady is cooking us dinner of wild chickens and garlic soup. All I know is that I am starving from driving all day, like on dirt roads, like I feel like I got hit by a train. I'm just so exhausted. So I'm really pumped for this meal. This is what a local meal looks like. We got ugali with soup on top of it and wild chicken. Mmm, so good. So hearty, so fresh, so flavorful. It's crunchy. Mmm, it's really tough and really flavorful. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Suddenly, two policemen arrived in a sketchy truck and started making accusations. I realized the only way to get out of this would be to pay them off to leave us alone. It's pretty wild how easily things can turn south when traveling in a conflict zone. They know we're here, we're here because we got the permit, so they communicated with them. Just come in to double check that. Did they want to search our bags? Their main reason why they came here is to check if we don't have any firearms. When we were eating dinner, we met the guy. 
and he invited us to sleep at his house here. And I thought we were gonna be sleeping on the floor somewhere, but he offered his treehouse thing right here, above ground. My crib. Some guinea fowl up here. Look, at least for eating, right? Hello, Mr. Guinea Fowl, how are you? It's not a tree house, it's just like a house that's way high up to protect from animals and the rains. I can walk straight under this. It's like at least six feet tall. It's so cool. What do you think of it? I love it. <sighs> All right, we got our mosquito net here. We got our bed. We just showered in uh, wet wipes. You can see the wet wipes here. They're pretty much covered in dirt. This is the glamorous life. Right, babe? Right. All right, we slept really good. It was really hot at the beginning and then it got cool. And then the sound of the roosters woke us up at 5 a.m. What did you think about the experience? It's so good. We're having a nice local meal here with the Vidoma people in Zimbabwe. In Africa, before we eat, we clap our hands like this. We clap hands to God, we clap hands to the one who prepared. Yes, please. What makes you happy in life? Someone like you, you are from America, you come here in Zimbabwe, so I'm happy uh, to meet such a friend like oh, you. Oh, I'll be there. This bread and butter combo is very good. We're just having a nice meal here. We've got hard boiled eggs, toast with butter, coffee. <laughs> good? Oh. You need to eat it this way. <laughs> All right. Oh, careful. <laughs> you got it. I got it. Oh, I, too, I got it too. <laughs> He literally just got up there in like three seconds. What's your name? My name is Christoph. How old are you, bro? It's Christine. What is it like to grow up with two toes when all of your friends have normal feet? Mm. I never wanted to come back from yeah. my family. Walking the two toes a long distance pains him on his foot because it's not normal. What about advantages? Like, are you able to do things that your friends can't? Can I bowl and watch our channel? Yeah, with my two toes, I can able to play soccer. Can you tell me when your son was born with the two toes? What was your first thought? This is a God-given guy. When he was born, I just raised him so that I can look after him. And um, I've got two kids with the same uh, disabled. So this guy is grade six, so I'm just looking after him. So, but I need some help so that he can go ahead with the school. Do you know the reason why the two toes is happening only to the Vodoma people? Ah, just says from God. Is it true that they cannot marry outside of their tribe? So far, so far they've just married in one tribe. Tribe, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Do you have any questions for me? Can I make a for your school? Oh, he's saying it's got a challenge when going to school. Maybe if you can buy me a small bicycle, those so that I can go quickly to school using two tours. I was late at school. The Vodoma story is a sad one, but one that I still feel is important to be told. They face ongoing discrimination, food insecurity, and unemployment. It almost feels like they've been forgotten. So it's a little bit weird because they're pretty shy, and you know we've learned about why they're shy, because they're scared of outsiders, they're scared of animals in the area, and they're just very private people, so we're not trying to really infringe too much on them, we're just kind of just hanging out and doing our best to smile and make some friends, and this is it. Quite an interesting experience and much different than I was expecting. I'm on my way to meet up with the chief who wants to share more context about the struggles that his tribe is facing. Could you just give me a little information about this community and this tribe? They say, they lived beyond this mountain in a place called Chitopo. So during the civil war, they were staying there and they were safe. Civil but war. as soon as the civil war of the 870s, independence in 1980, they started coming into these areas because it was safe. After talking to the chief, I'm hit with the hard reality of life for the Vidoma. They have been kicked out of their indigenous lands and are virtually unable to hunt for food or gather medicine like previous generations. It's not surprising why you can see the sadness in their eyes. Can you imagine what it would be like to get kicked out of your own house with no access to food, a job, or security? It is very characteristic of the Vidoma people that when they see somebody they do not know coming, just like we have come with a vehicle, 
they disappear. You come and look in their homesteads, there'll be nobody. <laughs> there are people that hide. What's the reason for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whenever they came close contact with the humans that were here, they were shy, you know, like people are looking at them and laughing at them. They didn't love that. So they, they would rather hide and, and, and stick to the thickets than be exposed. I'm curious to know why do people here have genetically these two toes and really nowhere else in the world? <laughs> Chief Chiam would have been the uh, man that spread this gene across. So I think it's a genetic makeshift that was spread through his lineage. One guy? Yes. I read online that there's like witchcraft involved. Is that a thing? There is no witchcraft, there's no sorcery. They were created like that by God. <coughs> that's exactly what he's saying and that's what they believe in. How many Tuto tribe people are left now? Yeah, it looks like uh, the numbers are growing with uh, these young folk that are getting married to, I'm sure, closely related uh, young ladies. They're also seeing a number of young babies born with the two toes. As the night falls, the Vodoma people want to perform a special song and dance. <laughs> While we are starting to see more smiles, this experience changes the way I think about tribes in Africa. This trip reminds me that some groups struggle more than others to adapt to a changing world. I hope that the Vodoma people are given more attention and opportunities so that they can lift themselves out of poverty and be free of violence in the region. And in case you were wondering, I kept my promise to give that kid a bicycle. I sent money to Watson via MoneyGram, who lives in Harare, the capital. He picked up the cash, bought the bike, and then put it on a bus to Kayemba where the kid picked it up. As a traveler, it's important to always give back, and I hope this video spreads awareness about indigenous rights in Zimbabwe. Thank you so much for watching the story, and I'll see you next week.